made in China or made in the USA. One of the themes attracting increasing attention is the reindustrialization of the US as a result of a domestic energy boom. Now, joining me now to discuss this topic is Mutasa Assad Syed, Deputy CIO at Societe Generale Private Banking Swiss. Mutasa, thank you very much for coming in. Now, at the moment, there seems to be this topic going on and the idea that Western nations, including the UK in this bracket, should return back to manufacturing and exporting physical goods. Now, amid this, you know, the global climate that we're in at the moment, it could be a good time to bring manufacturing back home. But what's your view on this? Is the US on the verge of a new industrial revolution or a reindustrialization, I should say? We think so. We think that in the US, um, there is multiple factor really putting everything in place for the US to be able to rebuild its industrial base. Uh, we don't think that reindustrialization is already in place. We have only anecdotes at this level. Um, but clearly, we see four main factors that could change the balance between what has been the trend of offshoring and really reducing the size of manufacturing in the US towards sort of a bottoming process, maybe a rebound, especially in the high value added sectors. The main one would be a cost advantage of the US. The US has really brought a lot of uh, productivity gains with quite low uh, wage increase, especially this productivity gain has been done uh, with, with automatization, robots. So it's, uh, it puts less uh, pressure on the wage. Uh, but also the, the big advantage in the US is clearly the currency. The currency over the last 10 years have really depreciated, especially against the euro. So all in all, when you compare um, US cost, labor cost, uh, compared to uh, main OECD's partners, uh, excluding China, really only the, the main competitors, uh, industrialized competitor of the US, it gained a 30% improvement over the last 10 years. So we think this is, this is the main factor to, to make managers or in, entrepreneurs think about putting production uh, back in the US. And when you look at China, which was really the, the big choice between China or the US uh, for US domestic um, producer, uh, cost of outsourcing in China has, is, is much more expensive now. And when you include everything else, like transportation duties, and also the fact that now there's a shortage of skilled labor, labor in China, the, the trade-off is, is much, more in the, much less in favor of China. It's still in favor of China, but much less. The second factor, which is really linked to the U.S. situation, is what you mentioned at the beginning, is the energy cost. There is really an energy revolution in the U.S. Um, we don't understand it fully from, from a European perspective, uh, but it's really li li related to natural gas, the exploration of shell gas that is really skyrocketing, where, where price of natural gas, which is 20% or above of energy uh, production, electricity production is based on natural gas. And this is really helping the U.S. reducing its bill, energy bill, for, um, for the whole country and especially for manufacturing. So this is clearly a competitive advantage for the U.S. Um, there are two, two other, uh, other factors which are more soft factors, but we think are going to be um, also helping a lot uh, entrepreneurs in the U.S., to think twice about choosing a location and, and, and favoring the U.S. Um, the first factor would be technological events. The U.S. remain on high value added sectors, uh, remain at the edge of research and development. The fourth factor is really the public policy uh, drive towards uh, reindustrialization in the U.S. We have seen in January Obama making a State of the Union address, pushing manufacturing and industrial jobs ahead in the agenda. And on the Republican side, uh, the primary also show candidates pushing forward the idea to protect American uh, industry, uh, employment, and, and this is also bringing the whole administration, the whole U.S. government into supporting this uh, reindustrialization. What about some of the potential economic impacts of this supply and demand revolution in, for example, the U.S. jobs market, GDP, the U.S. current account deficit? Now, this could have the potential to be a real stimulus for the U.S. economy. But in your opinion, is this the, the best way to make a significant dent in the U.S. trade deficit for the foreseeable future? I think we, we cannot take a quick conclusion on that. Uh, first, because this is a long-term process, we, we see the factor being in place for this to happen. Uh, but remember, even if in re reindustrialization is, is happening in the U.S. or happens in the U.S., it would take a couple of years with the new industry building up, and it would not be a 
employment-rich industries. Uh, it would be high value added. So I don't think the impact of, on jobs would be significant. Uh, at least it will just help protecting some, uh, some jobs right now. Um, but clearly, this idea that it could help sentiment and could build up into a dynamics in the US uh, could be the case. We are in the creative destruction uh, um, phase. So clearly, the US is, uh, is recovering. The growth is moderate. Uh, so it's, it's also the effect of, of new industries. On the second aspect about trade balance, it would be kind of the same. First, because what will happen in the U.S. is mostly that they will try to regain their own market shares. So right now it's offshoring of their own production, so they, they will onshore it. Um, so it, will, it could close the gap uh, with, with trade, trading deficits. Um, but the biggest impact on, on, on trade deficit would be on energy. The fact that they will rely less on imports, on expensive export, imports of, of energy. What about the US dollar then in this case? This could be favorable for the dollar. Um, again, it won't be a, a, a huge change in, in a couple of months, but we see uh, already the current account, excluding the U, uh, China and, and OPEP uh, trade for the US, the rest of, of the trade deficit is already closing. Uh, so clearly the fact that the U.S. would be less reliable on, on high-valuated imports and also on the energy side is clearly supportive for the dollar. Um, we are quite optimistic on the dollar, yeah. against the, the euro especially, mm -hmm. so we, we think the, the dollar would, would, would go back below 130, 125, 120 is, uh, is reachable. Now, economists are saying that the U.S. is quickly becoming the new Middle East in terms of energy production. Now, according to the United States Department of Energy, their 2012 projections, they say the U.S. will ship abroad 350,000 barrels a day more petroleum products than it imports. Now, what would be the consequences? Could we see a change in dynamics for the global energy markets? And if that were the case, who would be the biggest winners and losers? I think that's a key question for the next five years. I think what's happening in what's happening in the U.S. Uh, regarding the, the natural gas, the shale gas revolution, could be having an impact on, on on manufacturing. But also, what's happening on drilling oil in the U.S. is also a, a tremendous change in the dynamics. The U.S. used to be a net importer, a net consumer of oil, uh, and it's it's clearly uh, changing. The first, we see demand is is declining. Uh, we know about hybrid vehicles. We know about um, energy savings. Uh, but now we see more production, as you mentioned. Looking forward, what could happen is that some high-value-added product like jet fuel will remain very expensive because they cannot be substituted to another energy source. But the rest that is used for electricity production, such as natural gas, which is driving price down, but also coal, um, is going to, to, to put pressure on, on energy price, especially in the US. And also this excess uh, of natural gas in the US could turn into exporting natural gas abroad. And this would change the dynamics for other natural gas producers, um, such as uh, some Middle Eastern countries, such as Qatar maybe, uh, but also maybe Russia also, who is supplying Europe. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, uh, of the dynamics of, of usual um, specialized producer in those kind of energy that could be substitutable to the US supply uh, could see their, they would say, bargaining power uh, it being weakened. Mitasa, thank you very much. It was great to get your opinion on the matter. Thanks for having me. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but tomorrow we'll have plenty of daily broadcasts to keep you updated and, of course, more exclusive interviews here on Dukas Copy TV. Goodbye for now. <laughs>